Whenever I tell people how to learn jazz standards, I always, always tell them to learn them by ear. And naturally, those who are a little less experienced with learning music by ear, more comfortable with reading music, are a little bit skeptical at first. And maybe they can wrap their heads around the idea of learning the melody by ear. Like, that might be a little bit easier to latch onto, but they have a harder time imagining actually hearing chord progressions and learning those by ear. That's so much harder than simply learning a melody. So in today's episode, I want to go over my method for learning chord progressions by ear from scratch. And technically, you don't even need your instrument in order to be able to do this. Let's jump to it. Welcome to the LJS Podcast, where you get weekly jazz tips, interviews, stories, and advice for becoming a better jazz musician. And now your host, he's a jazz musician, author, and entrepreneur, Brent Bartstra. Hey, what's up, everybody? Brent here from LearnJazzStandards.com, which is a blog, a podcast, and videos all geared towards helping you become a better jazz musician. And today, of course, as always, I'm going to help you become a better jazz musician. Maybe it's in a small way today. Maybe it's in a big way. Or maybe this is just going to be helpful for you to review But I know that there are many of you, because I've heard from many of you, whether you're just a listener of this show, you check out my videos, you read my blog, or you're in one of my courses, I know that many of you struggle with learning chord progressions by ear. And like I said in the intro, I always suggest learning jazz standards by ear, and really any jazz language by ear. There's so many benefits. There is ear training involved. There is just the fact that this is the tradition of how the music is. I mean, the benefits are numerous. Not going to cover them today because I've done that in many, many other episodes. But the fact of the matter is when it comes to learning chord progressions by ear, it's definitely harder than learning the melody, especially if you're just not familiar with what common chord progressions like a 2-5-1 sound like in jazz music. So I have a method that I like to use that really breaks this down, and it requires some interval ear training. I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be easy, but you're going to hear how to do this. I'm going to go through a tune that I'm not going to tell you what tune it is. We're just going to listen to the chords of it, and we're going to figure out the chord progression on the spot by ear. And I am only going to play one note on my instrument in order to identify kind of a starting point. And then we're going to go from there and figure out the entire chord progression by ear. Now, I did do a video like this on my YouTube channel some months back, but it was on a different song completely. I'll link that in the show notes today so you can check that one out later. I think the more you hear me go through this, it's just going to get easier to understand. You're going to start wrapping your brain around it more. So I want you to have all the resources that you need to start getting started with this. And the more you do this stuff, the more you practice, the more you put in the work, you will get results every single time. All right? So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into this. Let's start unveiling, unmasking this mystery chord progression. Now, before we get started, I just want to say a few things right up front. And the first thing is that this process I'm about to go through to unraveling this mystery chord progression here is not really the end game. This is not really where we want to be in our musicianship at the end. We don't want to have to go through this sort of mathematical process to actually figuring out what chord progressions are. However, this is a great starting point and this is a great skill to have. At the end of the day, we want to just be able to hear what common chord progressions sound like and just immediately be able to know that's a 2-5-1, that's a 1-6-2-5, that's a 1-4-3-6, so on and so forth. And then it all comes down to just understanding what those actual key centers are or what the actual notes are. But this is a great starting point. Now, the second thing I want to say ahead of time is, of course, obviously, I know what jazz standard this mystery chord progression is. I already know what it is. However, the principles, the method that I go through right here is the same that I would do if I had absolutely no clue what the chords were, what the songs are, and it's going to be the same exact thing for you. So let's go ahead, and the first thing I'm going to do is just put on this backing track that only plays the chords and the bass. It's just a little trio, piano, rhythm section, and we're just going to listen to what 
uh, one chorus of this sounds like. And after that, we're going to start dissecting it. So listen closely, listen critically. All right, cool. So that's it. That's a chord progression right there. So I did make a promise to you. I said I was going to only play one note on my instrument. So obviously we could go through this. It, this is really about critical listening. You're going to find that out very quickly. This is about critical listening. So you could just use your own critical listening and then, you know, just kind of muscle your way through and figure out what each note is on your instrument. But we're going to use our brain mostly for this. But I did promise one note and only one note on my instrument. So we are going to do that. Now, I heard throughout listening to this three or four different cadences, three or four different cadences. Now, what is a cadence really? A, a cadence is just, you know, a series of chord progressions where I feel some sort of resolution, right? So it's a chord progression where I felt some sort of resolution and then it went on to another cadence where it had a resolution. So what I'm going to do is I want to find out what those resolution chords are those for actually we're going to start not with chords but just what the actual bass note is i want to know what the resolution centers are and then we're going to start filling in the blanks from there so i'm not learning each chord from the very first chord to the second chord to the third chord i'm finding what i believe are the most important chords first and i believe those are the resolutions of each cadence i heard about three of them possibly four in there so let's listen to the beginning of this again and i want to identify that first resolution point in this chord progression okay listen up okay that was the bass note that i heard now i'm listening very closely to the bass note so i heard do do D. Okay, D, that was the note. And guess what? I'm actually even seeing what the note name is. So here's my one note on my guitar. Okay, that is a D natural, a concert D natural. So my ear's really latching onto that bass note there. And that resolution point that I heard, and you could hear the re re resolve, right? D, that was the note. And if I were to fish through it with my instrument, I would know that it's a D natural. Again, I'm not trying to trick you here. I already know what this chord is just because I'm familiar with this song, but that is a D natural. Okay, now I'm gonna put my guitar away. I'm not gonna touch it anymore, and we're gonna start figuring this out, but we're not gonna figure out the chords that led to that resolution. I wanted to figure out what the next resolution point is in the next cadence. So let's keep on listening from there. Okay, that's the new note. That's the new resolution point. You heard it, right? There's a resolution there. Ooh. Now, I guess you could use your instrument again here. Maybe I'm being a little harsh with this, with not touching my instrument anymore. I'm just trying to prove a point, obviously. But ooh, that's the note we just heard. Do now the first note, the first resolution point we heard was was da. So da. That was the D natural da. And again, figuring all the stuff out ju just from listening to the bass notes of the recording and from now knowing that we have a D natural. So da, so da, do, da, do is the second resolution point. So da, do, da, do, do, da, da, do. This is where interval ear training comes in to play. Now I know that da, do is a major second descending. Da do da do. Okay, so D. What's a major second below? Do da do 
Da do. That's going to be C, right? So essentially, the second note that we have here is a C. So we have D, which is the resolution to the first cadence, and C, which is the resolution to the second cadence. Not worrying about chord qualities or anything right now, right? Just da do. Okay, D, C, we know that now because we just had to figure out that first resolution point. So I now know the, re the relationship between the two is a whole step down, okay? Now let's move on to the next cadence, so let's listen in. Da, da, da. Sound like a teenage boy going through puberty. <laughs> Duh. That's the note, though. That was the resolution to the cadence there. Duh. Uh, duh. The, the last note we played was, was concert C. So, duh. Duh. So, duh is concert C. Duh. So, do, da, da, do. It's the exact same thing. It's a whole step down. So, do is the note that we're on right now. And C is da. So C, da, do, that's a major second down. That's a whole step down. What's a whole step down from C? B flat, okay? So now we have three cadences so far. We have one that resolves to a D natural, one that resolves to a C, one that resolves to a B flat. Now, all that's required of you is to recognize where a resolution point is, right? And then just, just to identify that bass note of the first one. And that way you actually know what note is. Then all you have to do is understand what the intervallic relationship is between each one of those. Interval ear training. That's why I preach the fundamentals of ear training. Like I even have a course about the fundamentals of ear training. Because even for just simple things like this, it can come in handy you know, forget about the other benefits. Just it comes with with knowing the fundamentals. Okay, so we've got D, we've got C, we've got B flat. Now, if your ears were keen, I did hear one last chord right after that resolution point that I know for a fact is not involved in the next cadence. So I want to figure out what that chord is. So listen closely again to the very last note. That's the last note. So the, the B flat was D, do, was the last note, was the last note I heard, the bass note. D, do, D, do, D, do. Now that is a, a minor third, a minor third uh, descending specifically. D, do. Now if I took that do up an octave, do, do, and then I played the B flat again, D, do. D, da, that's a major six interval, regardless of how I want to figure it out. Uh, major six would be more to figure out what relationship that chord has with that resolution center of the B flat. But, you know, I know that a minor third descending from B flat is G. So we have a G. So what I want to do is keep a mental note. And if I was writing this down right now, I would keep a mental note that we have this G that's right after the B flat, which by the way is associated with this cadence. It's just not uh it's just not, you know, before it's it's after the resolution point of B flat. So we have a G that I want to kit put a little asterisk on right there because we want to understand really what quality that chord is in the end. Okay. Now there are two endings to this song. If you listen through there was the first time there was two choruses of this and they're basically mostly just the same if you were listening, but this first ending here that we're coming up on is a little bit different. It just has a little bit of a difference here. So I want to listen very closely to this next cadence right here, which is kind of an interesting one, to be honest with you. Probably the most complex one we're going to find in this particular tune. Okay, so let's listen uh, closely for the next section. Now, 
I'll be honest with you. This one is actually kind of hard. This isn't actually very typical uh, diatonic harmony here. There's a little bit of a curveball here. Now, uh, I'm realizing now about halfway through this episode that uh, I'm going to have to break my rule on not playing the guitar at all. I was trying to be cool, uh, but you'll forgive me, right? Because honestly, I think if I just play the notes, some of the notes for you on my guitar, you're just going to hear it a little bit better. So let's just not make this harder on you, all right? So first of all, I just want to play that G note. That G note that we last played was... So I just want to figure out what that next note was because it th that first note that was just played right after this because it does sound a little bit weird. It sounds like a little bit outside of the ballpark. So let me just listen to that first bass note of that first chord. Do, do. That was the note. That was the note of the first chord there. Do. All right, now, to so make things simple, I'm just going to go ahead and play that last G note we played. So do. It's the note we just heard. That's G. So D, do. So D. That's the G. D, do. D, do, D, do. It's a minor third. I always remember the minor third is bluebird, bluebird through my window, right? I mean, sometimes people use songs to help them remember intervals. So D, do. So I know that a minor third down from G is an E, right? So now we have an E of that chord. Okay, so let's keep a mental note of that from this G uh, that we had that's attached to the last cadence of the B flat. We now have this E note. Now let's keep listening because it doesn't get much easier. Do. Okay, that was the next note. Do. Now the E was ooh. Do, do. That's the next note. Okay, so the E is do, da is the next note. That's only a half step away, right? Can we hear that that's a half step interval? If not, right, we need to work on our interval ear training. So what's a half step up from E? It's F. Okay, so we know that the first two chords of this cadence are E and F. E, or uh, yeah, E, F, right? That's the two notes that we are look, listening for. All right, so let's figure out what the next chord is. We kind of have to take this one chord by chord to really dissect this, all right? So let's listen to the next one. D. That's the one I heard, D, D, so do, do. I'm gonna go to octave down, do. Do, that's the E, da, that's the F, da, do, da, do, da, do. That is do, da, that's a perfect fifth descending. Da, do, da, do. So what's a perfect fifth descending from F? That's B flat. Okay, now we've seen B flat before. And by the way, when I see an, a perfect fifth going descending from F to B flat, I already kind of know that this is a 5-1 progression. So technically, the real resolution of the cadence here is B flat again. So this second weird cadence that starts with an E that goes to an F that goes to a B flat, I can already hear a cadence there. This is a 5-1 progression. Uh, I'm guessing the B flat is a major seventh chord. I'm guessing that five chord is a dominant seven chord because the five is always a dominant seven chord. This is where having some harmony knowledge really helps out a lot, of course. Okay, there's one more chord though before we go around to the second ending. So let's just take a quick listen. We have E, F, B flat. What's the next one? Do that's the last note. There's a little chromatic approach into it, by the way. Do da did that, but do is the note, and B flat is D, and the last note was do D O E O E O. What's that? It's a it's a minor second descending. So what is it? It's an A. It's an A. And you can kind of hear, by the way, that this last chord is a turnaround chord that's going to lead us back to the top again, right? So D, U, okay, so we have an A. So this weird cadence, we sort of had to go chord by chord because it really wasn't following a normal pattern. So we started with an F, or sorry, we started with an E, then we went to a 
F, then we went to a B flat, then we went to an A, okay? This is how you really dissect these complicated chord progressions. Now, right now, obviously for all of this, we only know just the we only know just the root notes. We don't know what the quality of the chords are. We don't know what all the chords are and what they mean. So that's what we're going to figure out next. Now, I'm going to kind of uh, fast forward this episode a little bit in the sense that I'm going to just let you know that the second ending doesn't have this weird cadence in it at the end. The second ending has just uh, the same cadence as the first three chords of this song. So we're just going to kind of skip the process of listening to that because I don't want to be doing this. Uh, I, I don't want to kind of bore this podcast episode too much. I want to start getting to the really important things that I want you to learn from this. Okay. So again, this is where I totally lied up front and I said I was only going to use my guitar once because it's just way better if I actually just walk you through what we know so far. So what we know so far is that D, this is our first note, D is our first cadence resolution. C is our second cadence resolution. B flat is our third cadence resolution, okay? And then but it, attached to that, we had this G, okay? So I'm gonna have to figure out what that means. We'll figure that out in a second. But then we had this weird cadence that resolved to B flat again, but it started with E, F, B flat, and then ended with an A, which really, with my ear, my experience, I know is a turnaround chord that's going to lead us back to the top of the second A section. Okay, so we had D, C, B flat to a G, and then the last cadence was that weird E, F, B flat, and then a turnaround A. Okay, that's what we have for our bass notes. Now, here's the thing. If you're overwhelmed right now, don't be. This song is actually incredibly simple and as soon as we figure out what these first two chords are of the song, and we already know what the last the bass note is of the cadence, this is going to be really easy because it's all just the same thing for every single cadence, all right? So let's listen to the first two chords of the song with the resolution. Okay. Again, critical listening to the bass notes. D, do, da. Now, this is the most popular chord progression in all of jazz. This is one that you need to listen to so many times and hear so many times that there is no mistake. You don't have to do intervals or anything to figure it out. Okay? This is a 2 5 1 chord progression. But for example, let's just take the resolution, which was D, da. And the first chord is, uh, the first note was D, so da, D. Da, that's the D. D, da, da. Okay, that's a major second ascending. What's a major second ascending from D? It's E. It's E, okay? So let's just figure out what quality of chord that is. Now, this is where just listen to the piano for a second. Maybe you don't understand chord qualities yet. That's why you need to do fundamental ear training. You need to understand intervals. You need to be able to hear what quality of chords are. You need to be able to sing them. And the more you do this, the easier it gets, I promise. But let's listen to it one more time here. All right, so I'm just going to break it down for you really, really simply, really simply. So E, I, I was silly to think that I wasn't going to play my guitar at all in this episode. I want to show you so you can hear it. So E is the root note there. It didn't sound like this. If you listen, it didn't sound like that. That's a major seventh chord. It didn't sound like this either. That's a dominant seventh chord. It did sound like this. That's a minor seventh chord. Okay, if you really listen to it. Now, of course, I already know that a 2-5-1 chord progression which is the most popular chord progression in jazz, I know that it's a minor seventh chord followed by a dominant seventh chord resolving to a major seventh chord. I just know that information. But if you're someone that's starting literally from scratch, doesn't know any of this stuff with just a little bit of ear training skills, you can start to figure this stuff out from scratch. Now, I know that from that E went D, Do, okay, that's a perfect fifth descending. But if we take it up an octave, D, Da, it's a perfect fourth. So let's just make it, it either way, it's really the same note. But we can figure out that a perfect fifth descending from E is what? It's A. So E, A, and that A, if you really listen to that chord, 
was a dominant seventh chord. And dominant seventh chord that resolved very clearly to a one chord, which is, we already discussed, the root is D, right? And if you listen to that chord, it was a major seventh, 100%. It wasn't a minor seventh, it wasn't a dominant seventh. Just by me training my ears to hear what chord quality sound like and to understand intervals, I can figure out all of these chords. Now, I know this is a little bit tedious, but again, this is a good starting place. And even just some of these skills along the way, combining just recognizing progressions and trying to figure them out mathematically like this, you can do this without a lead sheet. You don't need a lead sheet. Do it all by ear. And the more you do this, before you know it, you'll be hearing songs called on the bandstand that you've never played before, but you'll just be like, oh, yep, 251, uh, 251 to relative minor, 251 to the four chord. Uh, oh, that went up a half step, right? You'll be able to start figuring out this stuff because you put in the work, okay? So I uh, hope that makes sense so far. Okay, so we've already just, uh, I've already identified basically what the first cadence is. It's a two, five, one in D major seven. It's a E minor seven, an A seven, and a D major seven. Now, now we already concluded what the resolution note is in the second, the second cadence, right? And that's C, but let's listen to the chord progression, uh, and this is going to be easy. All right, so again, let's make this easy. If you listen really closely, that's the exact same pattern as the last cadence. So I'm, you can already assume this is a 2-5-1 chord progression, but if you listen to the C there, right? Duh, that was the C. Now, the first chord, if you listen, duh, 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 that's a major second. So what is that? It's a D. And if you listen to the rest of the progression, you went da da da. You do the intervalic work. You understand that that's D to a G to a C, and then we can just fill in the blanks. You can go listen to the quality of chord, but it's definitely a D minor seven to a G seven to a C major seven. But again, just knowing that this is a two five one by recognition is paramount. It just makes it so easy. We don't even have to go through these processes. All right, so now let's listen to the next cadence really quickly here. All right, so if you listen, D, do, da, D, do, da, D, D, da. We've, we've heard this before, right? This is the exact same thing as the first two cadences. It's a 2 5 1 chord progression. I'm not going to even go through the intervals at this point. We know this sound. This is the sound we need to be hearing over and over and over again if we ever hear a 2 5 1 chord progression okay so uh so we said that the the note in this cadence the resolution was a b flat so what's a 2 5 1 in b flat it's c minor 7 f7 b flat major 7 now like i said we have this g note we have this g note and so i really quickly want you to listen to what the quality of this g note is let's play the cadence again Okay, so I heard the piano play a little piece there. So let's try to figure that out. Okay, so that's the nine I heard on top. So it was like, like that. And it definitely, it definitely sounded minor to me. You really just got to get your ears trained to hear these chords. But if we spent a little more time, and even if you're a little new to hearing chords and you really started playing the arpeggios, the chord tones, you would hear that that was a minor seventh. So just the piano player played the nine on top, which sounds really nice, by the way. So, okay, G minor. So what is G minor? This is G minor seven, really, is the basic quality. What does G minor have to do with B flat major, right? So we have a two, five, one in B flat major, and G minor is the sixth chord, okay? G minor is the sixth chord of B flat major. So what we have here is a two, five, one, six in B flat major, right? Two, five, one, six in B flat major, okay? So now we really just have one more cadence that we really need to work out here, and that's that kind of really complex one, which already we know the notes for. It's that E, F, B flat, A, and I've already kind of made some guesses for you with the 5 1 progression in there and things like that, but let's figure it out for sure. I'm really going to be listening hard for the quality of each chord here. All right, listen in. Okay, so very clearly to me, 
we started with an E minor seventh chord, right? E is the root note, and I heard a minor seventh. I didn't hear, I didn't hear that, right? It's fun when you play the different qualities. You can, it's like, oh, right. I didn't hear the dominant seventh chord. I didn't hear a half diminished chord. I didn't hear a diminished chord. I heard a, a minor seventh chord. So it's E minor seven. The next chord was a dominant seventh chord, and the note I'm really listening to is that third, right? And then you really could hear clearly that the B flat major seven, it was a B flat major seven. So you had E minor seven, F seven, B flat major seven, just can totally hear that quality. And then ended on an A seven, a dominant seventh chord. Okay, so we have an E minor seven, F seven, B flat major seven, a7. Now keep in mind, we're basically filling in the blanks right now. We intervallically figured out the root notes. So we just got to figure out what those quality of chords are. And you get better at this the more you do this. I've said that a million times now, but I want to keep hammering it into your head. Okay. So you may not know what this song is. You may not know what this song is, but I'll give it away just in case you don't know what it is. It's Tune Up by Miles Davis. So we have the, the first, let's just go through what we have so far in the first ending. So it's... E minor 7, A7, D major 7. That's a 2, 5, 1 to D major. And then we have D minor 7, G7, C major 7. 2, 5, 1 to the C major. And then C minor 7, F7, B flat major 7, G minor 7, right? So 2, 5, 1, 6 into B flat major 7. Then uh, the cadence, I call this a D tour cadence, by the way. E minor 7, F7, which the F7 is a 5 to B flat major 7. Okay, so 5, 1, and then A7. And I actually analyzed this in my Jazz Standards Playbook Volume 2. The E minor 7 is really the 2 going to the 5 of A7, which would resolve the D major 7, right? Which was our first cadence, so... But it's interrupted. That's why I called a D tour cadence, E minor seven, and then it goes to that F seven, that five one of B flat major seven, and then it finishes that first two five. If that doesn't make any sense, don't worry. That's not the point of this podcast episode. So, okay. So that's what we have now. Like I said, I mentioned that the second ending is the same. I'll even you know, sort of play the melody there, right? So that's the two five and a D major. Five into the C, B flat major, and then it kind of ends like this. Right, just a two five one back into D major seven. So that's the only part we didn't really figure out by ear, but I just didn't want to go through that a second time with you. I I just wanted to uh, expedite this episode from that point on because we we already kind of knew that information. So. Um, that is my process for from scratch learning chord progressions by ear. And yes, it can be a little tedious. Um, but as you see, what happens is ultimately you are able to hear intervals, you're able to hear chord qualities, and then you get used to hearing chord progressions so that it's not really a question of going through this process every single time. It's a question of you simply recognizing what a 2-5-1 chord progression sounds like, what a 1-6-2-5 chord progression sounds like. All the common chord progressions, you start to hear those. And maybe just that really uh, complex detour cadence right in this song is the only thing that you really need to stop for a second and go, oh, well, what is that? That, right? So that's kind of the point we want to get to. And the only way you can really do that is what? To practice it, to actually do it. So if you're stuffing your face into a, a fake book all the time, and I don't mean to sound rude about that, but if that's what you're doing all the time, constantly, are you going to be improving your ear? Are you going to be able to learn jazz standards better? Are you going to be able to hear chord progressions on the fly if you don't know a song at a jam session? No. You're not. The only way you're going to be able to do it is if you take the time to do stuff like this. And I guarantee you, if you learn tune up this way, you're going to know tune up way, way better than if you learned it off a piece of sheet music. There's just no way. I mean, even just the amount of time we spent here just analyzing this and listening critically, imagine what doing this for 10 jazz standards is going to do to your jazz playing, right? 
I mean, you're going to be able to just hear the chords better, and therefore you're going to be able to improvise over the chords better. Forget about actually just memorizing the song. Does that make sense? All right, I've been talking a lot today. I'm probably going to get a negative comment somewhere. (laughs) Someone saying Brent talks too much. I get that from time to time. I know, I know, I know. I'm working on it. But hey, I, I really want you to take action on this. So my call to action to you this week is to find one jazz standard and to do this. Okay, And if you need uh, a little to go over this one more time, uh, but on a different jazz standard, I've mentioned at the beginning of the show, I did a YouTube video uh, where I go through a different jazz standard doing this exact same process, but it's a different medium, right? You you see me on my on my computer and I've got uh, the empty staves and we're figuring out the chord progressions as we go. So you can see it more visually. That might be helpful for you too. So again, the show notes today, you're going to be able to find all of that. So just go to the show notes uh, at uh, learnjazzstandards.com forward slash episode 174. And I'll have the link to that video there if you want to just have a little bit more training on this. Okay. So take action. Make sure you try this out this week and happy practicing. All right, that's it for today, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. Really appreciate it. Uh, Hope you got a lot out of this today. Hope you put this to action. Uh, Always enjoy doing this. And uh, as long as you got a little bit out of today, that makes me happy. That that makes my week. So uh, thanks for listening. And, uh, you know, as you know, I don't do sponsors on this show to support it. Uh, I just promote what I already make specifically for you guys, specifically for my subscribers. And uh, so I just want to say, if you want to work on some of your fundamental ear training, I do have a course called How to Play What You Hear. You can find it at howtoplaywhatyouhear.com. We start with intervals. You're going to be able to sing them, recognize them. Then we go to chords. You're able to sing them, recognize them. Then we go to chord progressions. You're going to be able to recognize the most common ones, be able to start figuring them out sort of the way that we did today. And then we do some applied ear training after that using melodic dictation where you hear little melodies and then you translate them to your instrument. Sort of like sight, uh, it's sort of like the sight reading of ear training, you could kind of say, right? Um, anyway, so if you're interested in that, go to howtoplaywhatyouhear.com. That is where you can find that course if you think you need a little bit of ear training skills to get you started with some of this stuff. All right, as always, feel free to leave a five-star rating and review on iTunes, if you got a lot of value out of this show today, or you just get value to this podcast in general, always helps just to, you know, if you tell other people why you like it, you know, just helps other people know this is a show worth listening to. So go to Apple Podcasts, iTunes, leave me a kind five-star rating and review. Really appreciate that. All right. I'll be seeing you next week on the Learn Jazz Standards podcast. See you next time. Thanks for listening to the LJS podcast brought to you by LearnJazzStandards.com. Subscribe to the series on iTunes and don't forget to join our jazz community at LearnJazzStandards.com forward slash newsletter.